college football prime time. Coming to you tonight from Colorado Springs, where Air Force looks to win their seventh straight at home over Colorado State in this Mountain West Conference matchup. It's been very challenging in the league this season for Colorado State. They need to win tonight to be bowl eligible for the fourth consecutive season. Air Force has already secured bowl eligibility. Mike Corey, Rini and Golia from Air Force tonight. And how about the Falcons, Rini? Let's start with them. It's a total team effort with this group week in and week out. Oh, it sure is. And if you like to see the ball run like I do, you're in for a treat tonight. Air Force with that triple option attack. We'll send four different running backs at you, led by Jacoby Owens. They try to get to the perimeter with that running game. And when they do choose to pass it, they will take shots down the field with our quarterback, Arion Worthman. Worthman has come into this season and has been banged up a little bit. He had to replace the senior in Nate Romine. What do you think about him here tonight? Yeah, nursing an upper leg injury. I think he looks good. I've been watching him in warm-ups. That running game is predicated on him and his reads, but when he does throw it downfield, he needs to be accurate tonight. On the other side, Nick Stevens was the starter originally for Colorado State. He got replaced by the freshman Colin Hill, but Stevens is back due to the injury to Hill and is now playing very well. Well, he hasn't missed a beat, and he's actually gotten better if you look at his numbers since he came back. Got a lot better sitting behind Colin Hill watching. Air Force won the toss tonight. They have deferred, and Colorado State is going to be on offense to start this game from the 25-yard line, and we'll see Stevens for the first time here tonight. Junior out of Marietta, California. As we said, started game one, Reedy, and this group in Colorado State really struggled the first two weeks of the season. They were actually last in the nation in passing as they tried to figure out the combination of Stevens and Hill. They went with Hill, and now he's out for the season. Yeah. And, you know, talking to Mike Bobo and Will Friend about Nick Stevens, he said he actually got better behind Colin Hill kind of watching. Um, and that'll happen for some players sometimes. And, you know, getting that different perspective uh, from the sideline watching, you come back and you're a better player. Colorado Rose State is going to start in the Wildcat with Dietrich Clark, who takes it and gets up close to the 30-yard line. They like to do this a lot. That's his 28th time rushing. He's listed yeah. as a wide receiver, but you'll see him do more. Yeah, than usually don't see him start the game in Wildcat. Dietrich Clark, a receiver that was a an option quarterback uh, in high school, so he can throw it, but they start with Wildcat on first down, and now they bring Nick Stevens back into the game. Yeah, we'll get to or see Stevens. Start the game, I yeah, should say. for the first time tonight. Who after losing a starting position, came back from game seven on. Colin Hill was injured in week six. And Stevens has been the man. First pass caught by Michael Gallup, and that is a first down reception for the Rams of the 40-yard line. When they throw, Michael Gallup is their number one receiver. They want to target Gallup. They want to get more touches in him, whether it's in the pass game. You may even see Gallup on a few of the uh, jet sweeps tonight, Mike. 45th catch of the season for the leading receiver on this Colorado State team. Dalen Dawkins is in the backfield on this set, and he has his first carry tonight, and it's a big one. To the outside, Dawkins, one man to beat. He does it. Going the distance, touchdown, Colorado State. 61 yards. One minute and one second into the game. Well, that's what you want to do on your first carry of the game, and this is what Air Force defensive coordinator Steve Russ was worried about. This offensive line of Colorado State is very big and powerful. And you see that hole on the right side. Huge, great job. Zerblis, Goldich on the right side. And tell you what, Dalen Dawkins hits it full speed and takes it to the house. That is the longest run of the season for Dalen Dawkins by five yards. He had a 56-yarder earlier tonight, a 61-yard run for the touchdown, and it's 7-0 Rams. What a start here tonight in Colorado Springs. That defensive line of Air Force, you know, 30 to 40 pounds across the line. So, really, their goal coming into this game is to get off the ball, control it, win the line of scrimmage, run the ball, and then they will decide when they want to throw it. Boy, what a great start. For Mike Bobo's team. Big kickoff here, and it'll be first and 10 from the 25 for the Air Force Academy in an early hole to begin after giving up that big run for the touchdown. So, Arion Worthman, we will see Worthman here at this set, I would think. He's yeah. coming in as the sophomore 
out of normal Illinois. His first career start last game. What do you like about his play? I was watching him warm up. He looks fine. Uh, he's athletic. 5'11", 200 pounds, good size. Um, and he's a smart kid. You have to be in that triple option set. You got to make the correct reads, and you got to be a tough runner. And again, when you do pick and choose when to throw it, you got to be accurate. Triple option attack here for Air Force. Worthman's going to drop back to pass in his first play, taking a shot down the field for Robinette. And he has it. Jalen Robinette. How many times has he done that this season? The big play guy for a big game. I mean, I love the fact that it's a triple option attack. They run it, run it, run it. They open the game with a deep pass to Jalen Robinette, their number one receiver. Just a deep crossing route. Nice throw by Arian Worthman, and Robinette will go up. He's six foot four, 215 pounds, a big receiver that can outbody those defensive backs. Now they get it out to Jacoby Owens, and he picks up about three yards for Air Force. Robinette, who came in as the all-time leading receiver in Air Force history, gets things started early for them. He's athletic, he goes up, and right there, that matchup on Kevin Nutt, the defensive back for Colorado State. Robinette is six inches taller than him, so that's a, a good matchup for Air Force. Again, Owens, and he'll get down to the 35, four yards shy of a first. Robinette's a basketball player. That was actually his passion, was playing basketball. He was in a lot of AAU showcase events in high school. His offer to come to Air Force actually came from Coach Calhoun when he was attending one of his basketball games. Yeah, and you usually don't get a big play wide receiver into a triple option attack, but they keep him happy because they give him a lot of passes. He's the number one and pretty much the only target for that wide receiving court. Third down on the opening series for Air Force, and Worthman dives to the 30, which is where he needed and has the first down. I just love the awareness and the smarts of Arian Worthman. Listen, all these kids are disciplined and smart from Air Force Academy. He knew exactly where that first down marker was. He gave that extra second effort to dive for the yard to gain, as you said, the 30, Mike, and he picks up the first down to move the sticks. Worthman, who did not play at all during his freshman campaign a year ago in his first career start last game, second tonight, and running very well off to the left side this time. It's about half of it on first down, second and five on the way. And this offense is working exactly like it wants to. They grind it out. They like to possess the ball run the clock, and they'll go right, left, inside. The fullbacks get a lot of carries. Uh, it's a fun offense to watch, and it's a fun offense if you're Air Force when it's running correctly. And so far, this drive, it's running pretty good. they got two very good fullbacks and DJ Johnson and Shane Davern. Johnson's in right now, and it's a fake to him. He's blocking in front for Worthman, and not much here. It's going to bring up another third down. but. You also have to keep in mind that this group can go for it on fourth down as well, and they only can have two or three yards to pick up. You know, don't put it past them to go for it on fourth. Yeah, and don't put it past them to run it when it's fourth and five, fourth and six, it's, which would be a traditional passing uh, down and distance for other teams, not, not for Air Force. Third down and three. Now Worthman from the shotgun. Option gets it out to Tim McVeigh, and McVeigh has the first, putting his head down, and finally brought down at the 10 yard line. What a powerful run by McVeigh, the junior. It just shows you right there, Mike, for Colorado State, how disciplined you have to be. And one guy's out of position, they come backside with a little fake inside, they run option left, good pitch by Worthman to the back, McVee, and they pick up the first down, and great blocking. That's another thing you'll notice tonight watching Air Force. Everybody blocks very well. If they're not running the ball and they're a back, they're blocking for their teammate. You love that. First and goal now for Air Force. Worthman again, McVeigh with some space, and he's got it for the touchdown. Air Force answers on the 10 yard score by Tim McVeigh, his seventh of the season. Option left, option right. That time they go option right, and I love what McVeigh does. He gets to the perimeter, Mike, sticks that right foot in the ground, squares those shoulders, gets north and south and south, and finds the goal line. Love that out of the running back. Might be in for a little scoring here tonight, don't you think? I think so. And on the ground, not through the air. Right. 
7-7, Air Force and Colorado State. Less than four and a half minutes into the contest. Again, watch the blocking for Air Force. Discipline, you're gonna see a lot of cut blocking from them, but just get off the ball. Good decision by Worthman to pitch it to McVay. You see the blocking downfield, excellent. Jalen Robinette, number nine, out in front blocking. You see the lineman downfield. Number 12, Tyler Williams blocking everyone on a man. Great job, 56, Colin Sandor's out there. That's what makes this offense go. Not a bad start for Air Force as well. And we have thought after giving up that big run down the sideline to Dalen Dawkins. And that's what this team likes to do is run the football. And we've seen a little bit of both now as it'll be again first and 10 from the 25 for the Rams. As they went with a direct snap to Clark to begin the game. Dawkins and not much. The tackle by Samuel Byers, the defensive tackle for Air Force right there. On and, and that's what Air Force has to do up front. Byers that time gets off the ball quick, sheds the block, and gets to the backfield. You know, they're undersized. As I said, you got to get off. And a little mix up there because they really let Byers go. And you can't do that up front. But a nice read by Byers to make that tackle. Second down, play fake. Stevens goes to the outside and has Gallup again on the catch. And he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down, taken down by Ronald Latipo, Roland Latipo for Air Force. And Gallup again, a good size receiver. You see the cushion they give Gallup because of his speed. He's just going to do an outcut there and pick up nine yards. There's a lot of options for Colorado State, isn't there, Randy, with all their backs and all the receivers and tight end. They get a lot of players involved. Oh, absolutely, and, and I like that in the offense. Spread it around. And they're changing up the backfield as well with Izzy Matthews on a third and short. It'll be Matthews. He has the first. And across the 40-yard line is Izzy Matthews, sophomore out of Redding, California, the second leading rusher behind Dawkins. Oh, and it kind of brought a full house in there. 60 Trey Moxley was in there as a lead blocker. Look at the big beef at the fullback spot. You bring in a couple extra offensive linemen. That's how you move the line of scrimmage on third and one. I love it. We had Colorado State a few weeks ago, Rainey, and they had a couple of their backup offensive linemen with Colby Meeks and Trey Moxley in there. So it's a capable yeah. backup. Their regular, regular starting five is in there now, but they've got some talented players. Oh, no doubt. You got finally got a little depth at that offensive line spot. Will Friend is very happy about that. Marvin Kinsey now with a carry, and he has a nice little hole about five yards on a first down carry. And they really like Marvin Kinsey. He's a true freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, 6'1", 190 pounds. He's, a, he's an every down back. Mike can do it all, has good burst, can catch the ball as well. Really high on this young freshman. Just past the halfway point of this first quarter. <laughs> Tough conference this year here in the Mountain West. Good to have you with us here tonight from Colorado Springs. Mike Corey, Rini and Golia. And it's a third and short for Colorado State. And they're going to pick it up. They scored on their opening drive of the game. That's a first down run here by Izzy Matthews. A first and goal for Colorado State at the 10 yard line. Dawkins already one touchdown tonight and stopped shy just inside the three yard line. Well, but I really like the way Dalen Dawkins is running tonight, Mike. You can see those feet churning, squares his shoulders, and he is running hard. He's going to take a break. His shoe comes off. Ran right out of his shoe. He was running so hard. Got to do it, yeah. One of the best running backs on this team. Very shifty, too, and you can get him out in space. Red zone scoring has been spectacular this season for Colorado State. And now it goes to Matthews, and Matthews is in for the touchdown. Izzy Matthews from three yards out. And again, where did they run? That right side of that offensive line. That time they go with Izzy Matthews, a little bit bigger back, six foot, 210 pounds. Just a little off tackle play to the right. Good push by the offensive line. And Matthews walks in for the score. Again, a big offensive line in Colorado State. Really 30, 40 pounds bigger than Air Force up front. They need to control the line of scrimmage. And so far, 
in this game, they've done that. Well, they are doing that, Rini. That was Mike Bobo's big key here tonight coming in. He said the offensive line, they've been playing better, especially over the last three or four weeks. Some good practices protecting their quarterback and paving the way for two rushing touchdowns so far tonight. Bill Chance to return again after the kickoff by Colorado State. Air Force now down 14 to 7 in this first quarter. What a Worthman on the keeper had Owens on the outside. He says, I can do it, and gets across midfield for a first. Finally, Trey Thomas took him down. And that's how you run option to perfection. Aaron Worthman coming down the line. The linebacker doesn't step up to take him. You just keep the ball, turn it up, and get a big chunk of yardage. And this is what that Air Force attack does to you all night long. That's a 25-yard run that time by Worthman. Owens now. It was interesting this week, we were hearing that Worthman was banged up. He had an upper leg contusion, wasn't practicing all that much. Didn't practice at all Monday or Tuesday. Them, and yeah. it, they did, and it was Pate Davis a senior who hasn't seen any action. We were wondering whether Worthman was even going to play tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Coach Troy Cajon really, I think he knew he was going to play him. Just wanted to rest some earlier in the week, give Pate Davis those reps, and it worked out because Aaron Worthman looks pretty good tonight. Shane Davern now, one of the fullbacks for this group, and it's still going to be about five yards shy of the first down. Yeah, they will run the fullbacks a lot. And you might say to yourself, oh, you only get one or two yards, but boy, it makes that defense play honest because you have to protect against the fullback, and that's when they come back and hit you with the option to the outside. That's what I was going to say. You wonder what they're setting out for later in the game. Correct. Or later for this play. You know, that's what you just have to play honest. If you're that Colorado State defense, you can't get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. You got to do your assignment, or you'll get beat for a big chunk of yardage. Tim McVeigh, Shane Davern are back there with Tyler Williams as it's a third down and five for Air Force. It's out to Williams, and Williams is able to get the first tripped up inside of the 40-yard line. Tyler Williams, and they'll do that with him more often than getting the ball through the air as a wide receiver. Two catches, now 33 And rushes. you saw 66, Jake Barnhorst out in front as well, leading the way for Tyler Williams. And again, you saw two fullback runs, then they go option on third down. That's like a pass for them, and they pick it up. And the eye now with Johnson and Owens. It's Jacoby Owens, and the head down gains good yardage on first down for Air Force as we go under 30 seconds to play in the first. Yeah, I mean, Air Force is doing what they want to do. They're controlling the clock. They're picking up first downs on the ground. They're just right now defensively not stopping Colorado State, so they're going to have to match it offensively. Touchdown for touchdown here early. This is the 11th play of the drive coming now for Air Force. It's Owens again with Davern blocking in front, and he's going to be close to another first down. Let's see where they spot it, and that should be the last play of the first quarter. And it's been pretty good so far. Colorado State has scored on two 75-yard drives. Air Force has done that as well. They're trying to match them, and we'll see if they can do it when we come back with the second. Dawkins has a touchdown run for Colorado State. So does Izzy Matthews. Tim McVeigh has a score for Air Force. And we're back to Colorado Springs with a second quarter after this on ESPN. Second quarter from Colorado Springs here tonight at the United States Air Force Academy. Great to have you with us. Mike Corey and former UMass All-American and NFL running back Rini Ingolia, 14-7. Colorado State Air Force though trying to get the first down Rennie on a third and short here coming up uh, I mean if I'm the play caller Mike Thiessen, uh I have one name in mind DJ Johnson we'll see if they give it to him this drive started back at their own 25 yard line with 423 left in the first we've seen some long sustained drives so far tonight and possibly another one here as Johnson has the first down, and it sets up a first and goal for the Falcons. He's just a, such a tough runner from that fullback spot. You know, traditionally you think of fullbacks as blockers, not in the Air Force running a game. They run the football, and they run it effectively. And they go right back to the line quickly, and Johnson again 
And Muscle's only about a yard, maybe two this time. His given name, DeAndre, the senior out of Rookville, Georgia. Over 1,300 yards rushing in his career. I could say the same for Owens, who has over 2,700 yards rushing. Shane Davern is over 1,200 yards rushing. Three players over 1,000 yeah, yards. I love the running backs as a group because they're not flashy. They all know what they do best, and they all run very hard. Now they'll toss it out to Williams. That's the third time they've done that tonight. Nice tackle made by Justin Sweet for Colorado State. And Sweet was one of the guys, defensive coordinator Marty English told us how to have a big game from that safety spot. You gotta come up that blood alley, I call it. Make those tackles inside out. And Sweet did it right there. 15th play of the drive, big one on third and goal coming up for Air Force to try to answer. Shane Davern is now behind Worthman under center. They're going to go back out to Tim McVay now, cutting back the other way, and McVay has his second touchdown tonight. Well, we saw a reverse from Colorado State earlier tonight. We get another one. Air Force is out. We can do it, too. McVay's their speed back, but watch the blocking at the goal line for McVay he comes around. Robinette's doing a great job. 43, Shane Davron. McVay cuts it up. A great play call, great execution. And we're an extra point away from this game being tied. That is now 24 touchdowns in 24 career games for Tim McVay. And Luke Strabel makes it a 14-all ball game early in this second quarter. Johnson carried a bunch. Davern a few, Tim McVay caps it off with his second touchdown tonight. We're tied early in the second. We're tied at 14. We've had four 75-yard drives, and the latest comes with our Jared Galleria of Jewelry drive recap. Let's take a look back at it in just a moment as Air Force is able to score with Tim McVay, who's had two rushing touchdowns tonight. On the return, Clark, and he is hit hard across the 20-yard line. Rankings coming out. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that. And we still got a big game in progress right now with Michigan and Iowa. There's Gallup on the catch. And he's close to the first down up to the 32. Little tunnel screen there, and you know, talking to Mike Popo and Will Friend this week, they said they are looking to find ways to get Michael Gallup the ball. And boy, they have not disappointed through one quarter into this second. They are getting him the ball a bunch tonight. Well, they really are. Marvin Kinsey is in the backfield. Gallup stays up at the top of the screen in a four receiver set. On a second and short, this opens up the playbook a little bit here now for Colorado State. Gallup in motion, pressure coming in, and they dump it off of the screen to Kinsey with blockers in front. And Marvin Kinsey turns on the Jets, finally dragged down inside the 20 by Brody Hicks for Air Force. A great play call against the pressure of Air Force. And give Nick Stevens credit on this screen. He kept dropping back. He didn't rush it. He waited for Kinsey to clear. Drops him the ball perfectly. And there's just no defenders out there for Air Force. Kinsey turns it up and gets a big run on that screen peg. That's a 49-yard run that time by Kinsey and a quick pass sailing off the mark intended for Gallup. So we've had a 61-yard run by Dawkins tonight and a 49-yard run by Kinsey that we just saw for Colorado State. Big play offense for them here. Yeah, and, you know, you just if, if you're Air Force, it's feast or famine. Well, you just, you're selling out, but, boy, you can get burned and give up some big ones, and they've done it already tonight. Colorado State has scored on 10 of its last 14 drives, dating back to last game in a 37-0 shutout win over Fresno State as Kinsey is held up after a couple, and the ball comes loose, and they will recover it. Nice job by Trey Moxley, who we mentioned earlier, one of the backup offensive linemen that's in on this series to recover it and keep it for the Rams. Yeah, good job by Moxley to jump on that. Unfortunately, they're gonna lose the three or four yards that they picked up, and Kinsey hits it, and clearly from here, it looked like it came out before he was down. So it will be a fumble. Heads up by Moxley to jump on it's it. It's now third and 11 after the loss on the play. It was a fumble that Colorado State got back. And they continue to be perfect on third down tonight. Three for three.
Dawkins picks up the blitz to the pass to no one. Incomplete. Closest was Robert Ruiz, but Stevens had to get rid of it, Randy, with pressure in his face. Air Force likes to send blitzes. You call them like Dalen Dawkins. Nice job from that running back position to slide over, pick up the blitz, but it still pressured Stevens to throw it before he wanted to. Good coverage in the back end and a good job by Air Force to force a field goal attempt in Colorado State. Wyatt Bryan has come on for a 38-yard field goal attempt. He's 10 for 12 on the season. And he's able to knock it through. He's now hit 23 of his last 27 field goals, and Colorado State goes back on top for the third time tonight. Welcome back to Colorado Springs tonight. It's a 17 to 14 lead for Colorado State after the field goal. Yeah, just a uh, little back and forth game. Good job there by Air Force to hold Colorado State to three. First time anyone's held someone to just a field goal tonight. We've had four touchdowns in our opening four drives of the game. Worthman's pass is intercepted, picked off by Justin Sweet, and he's gonna score. Count it for Colorado State. And that was all caused by the tripping penalty that set Air Force back behind the chains. They're a triple option team, they're not a passing team, and when they have to pass, this is what happens. Good coverage by Colorado State. Justin Sweet jumps the route from that safety position, and it's a pick six. Air Force wants to dictate when they want to throw, but when they're behind the chains and they're forced to throw right there, boy, Colorado State's sitting back waiting for it. Excellent point, Randy. It became predictable at that point. You knew it was coming, and Sweet was able to jump the route on his first interception of the season, takes it back 27 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, and it's just a good job by Sweet really playing center field Worthman play action pass. Really read his eyes. He doesn't come off the receiver. And, and Sweet just sitting there in center field comes up, jumps underneath it, makes the catch, and then a nice run after that catch for the pick six. And who is he trying to go to? The top man, Jalen Robinette, number nine. Sweet read it perfectly. He was right there. And that's a big game changer well, for Colorado and you State. You saw early. all the Colorado State defenders bracketing Jalen Robinette. You had him underneath, and you had Sweet over the top, and just, again, Worthman never came off Robinette. His eyes went right to him, and that's an easy pick six for the redshirt junior out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Justin Sweet. Davis kicks off, and again, no chance at a return for Air Force. Now down 10, largest deficit so far of the first quarter, yeah, the first half. Fresh set of downs for Air Force. And Owens is stood up after a gain of maybe a yard this time. And it's about discipline, it's about being in the gaps. And when Marty English talked to us about it this week, you know, I asked him, what are the things you could do to change things up, too, if it's not working well for you? It's got to be very difficult, especially not going up against this offense in practice. Yeah, he said the biggest thing is you have to be able to make in-game adjustments when you play a team like Air Force. and. And uh, so far, doing pretty good, but Air Force is, is doing what Air Force does. They run the ball. Worthman on the keeper, and that is one of the adjustments that he talked about as Worthman gets a yard shy of the first down, is sometimes changing up who has quarterback yeah. responsibilities. Yeah, and I mean, because first and foremost, you have to get after the quarterback. And Air Force is right where they want to be. Third and short is a good down and distance for them as we take a look at Marty English. And, and I tell you what, the Mountain West Conference, Mike, out of all the conferences we call each and every week. They are just so diverse in so many different offenses, and it just drives defensive coordinators crazy, preparing. It can't be easy, that's for sure. Third and short, as Air Force has been converting on third down tonight. Five of six. Make it six of seven. Worthman breaks free. Look out. He's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Falcons. 54 yards by the quarterback. Right on cue, we just talked about being disciplined. First and foremost, on option, you have to get to the quarterback, Worthman. You saw the defenders come up and get to the pitch back. 
no one gets to the quarterback. Worthman says, okay, I'm gonna plant my left foot, I'm gonna turn it up, square my shoulders, and I'm gonna take it to the house. And really, in no man land, it was Kevin Nutt. He comes up, he decides to go to the back instead of taking the quarterback, Worthman, and in doing so, leaves an alley, and Worthman takes it 54 yards for the touchdown. And that's gotta be tough, Reedy, because you just saw that play, and I agree with you. You saw number 10 Nutt. You don't know whether or not he was still on his key, but at that Correct. point, the quarterback's running free. I mean, what are you gonna do? When in doubt, you attack inside out. So you take the first person ball carry that's gonna hurt you, and it's Worthman. No one takes him. You saw Nutt fly by him, and he's gone. He's off to the races. Well, these wide receivers are full-time blockers and part-time receivers, if you will, at these Air Force Academy members. Jalen Robinette, and it was the tight end Ryan Riffin well, on those blocks. And that's what impressed me. Jalen Robinette is a big-time receiver, Mike. He's got close to 800 yards receiving on the year, but yet he still blocks. He's not a prima donna. You're gonna see no prima donnas for Air Force. How many 75-yard drives are we gonna have here tonight? Dietrich Clark on the return for Colorado State. That's five of our six scoring drives tonight have started at the 25-yard line. Can Air Force step up and get some takeaways here on defense? I called the Air Force game versus New Mexico a few weeks ago in Dallas in that neutral site game, and we talked to Air Force again this past week, and Steve Russ, defensive coordinator, said, oh, I'm sorry about that, because yeah, they yeah. gave up 45 points to New yeah, Mexico. That speed of New Mexico right. really hurt them. An option team, and look what's happening here tonight with these two as much doing on this run. But now Colorado State has a chance to say, all right, let's be careful here. Let's not do the same thing. Exactly. They're in the same position here. That's why they ran it on first down. Now, if you're Mike Bobo, you're content going into halftime on the road with a three-point lead. So definitely no mistakes here out of their quarterback, Nick Stevens. That's they, priority number one. But they do have to watch it. Air Force has the two timeouts remaining. If they stop them on this play, you would imagine that Troy Calhoun's going to call a timeout. Maybe try to get this back in decent field position. Stevens. Nowhere to go. Now his receiver, though, he throws the interception. It's Jesse Washington. Washington spins and is down close to the 20. And a flag comes in at the end. Yeah, lovely post possession, so it's going to be Air Force ball. And who's the happiest guy in that field right now, Mike? DJ Johnson. It's just you. After the interception, personal foul, targeting number 44 of the defense. It was in continuation of Nick Stevens throwing the pass, which would be a roughing the passer. You could have rough, roughing the passer with targeting, so I, I, I'm not quite sure how that interception would stand. Review, there is no foul from targeting. It'll be Air Force ball, first and 10 at the 22-yard line. All right, Rudy, so they agree with you. They took it away. Correct, and all his replay is looking for is the targeting. They can't reverse anything else. Mike Bobo is right to be upset because he didn't call a late hit. He called targeting after the interception, and I just, I, I don't agree with the call. I think Eddie Shelton, the referee, got it wrong. This is clearly a late hit. Watch it. Grant Ross takes three steps, Mike. He didn't target, I agree with that, right. but it's a late hit. The problem was they did not say that. Correct. They just called targeting, Co only targeting. The booth cannot initiate they a cannot flag. They cannot change it. They should I, have called. I just think Eddie Shelton missed the call. Right. That's a late hit with roughing the passer. They should have called that. And that interception with, couldn't, shouldn't count. They should have called late hit with, with targeting. targeting. Correct. The booth would have taken away the targeting, which they did, but the late hit would have stood. Correct. And that's why Coach Bobo is so upset. Is now Air Force has a chance at first down and 10 and 50 seconds left in this first half from the 22-yard line. And it was Johnson now who's the one that fumbled just a little while ago. Let's not forget about it. We've had two turnovers here in the last couple of minutes. Johnson fumbled. Colorado State recovered. And Colorado State throws the interception. And now Air Force has it back. Second down and three. Worthman gets it out for Tim McVay. McVay, third touchdown tonight for him. And Air Force has their first lead of the night after the 15-yard run for the touchdown. I mean, McVay is having one heck of a night on option, Mike. Doesn't matter if it's option left, option right. We'll give Worthman a lot of credit. He is pitching it at the right time. So McVay, again, he's their speed back. And boy, when he gets it, he cuts it up north and south, turns on the Jets, and gets it. And again, those receivers for Air Force do a great job blocking 
Again, Tyler Williams, number 12, excellent job with that stock block to help McVay get his third touchdown of the night. Well, that's tough for Colorado State. They had only one turnover in their last four games coming into tonight. This turnover translates into points and now an Air Force lead. Gallup setting that up. He's got 93 yards on seven receptions, gave him a chance. But it's Air Force that takes a four-point lead into the locker room. And hey, listen, we're in for a big second half, and we'll see which defense can step up. Those offenses really controlled that first half. A lot of action here tonight in this Mountain West Conference matchup. Colorado State trying to win to be bowl eligible, and they trail it by four at the half. When we return, Brendan Fitzgerald and Charles Albarkle in the studio with the college football halftime report. Stay tuned. ESPN College Football Primetime continues this Saturday night from Colorado Springs. Good to have you with us. Mike Corey, Rini, and Golia. Welcome back. 28-24 Air Force as we get set for the start of the second half. Yeah, Ram looks pretty comfortable right there walking yes, around does. the stadium. Here's tonight's Taco Bell game track in our first half stats. What stood out to you? Well, I mean, 278 rushing yards by Air Force. That's par for the course right there. If you're Colorado State, you got to stop the option a little better. Um, other than that, game's pretty much played out like uh, we expected. Both teams very good on third down tonight. You see that yardage right there. There's the third down conversions. And Colorado State needs a few more receivers than Gallup, right? I mean, he has seven catches, 93 yards. Everybody else, two for 46. As you look at Worthman on the left and Nick Stevens, the quarterback for Colorado State, on the right. Air Force ball to start the second half. Worthman gets it out. Tim McVeigh. We've seen this scene a lot tonight. He does it again in the Colorado State territory. Monster tonight. Three touchdowns already for him. I mean, every time Tim McVeigh gets it on the option on the perimeter and turns the corner, he's got five yards automatically. Then he just squares the shoulders, finds a crease, and hits it. And he's getting gouging runs after gouging runs against his Colorado State defense. That was a run of 30 yards. He's now over 100. Seven carries for 101 and the three touchdowns for Tim McVay tonight. Johnson, who fumbled late in that first half, they're trying to get him back into the flow of the offense. Just a one-yard pickup. Uh, it's exactly what you want to do. After a back fumbles, all the good coaches, they'll go right back to that running back to get it out of his head. But, boy, what a night Tim McVay's having. Seven rushes, 101 yards. Pretty good average, three TDs to boot. Well, he comes in averaging 7.7 .7 for his career, which is number one in Air Force history. So all he does is turn out big plays. And it's going to set up third down now for Air Force just outside the 40-yard line. And the running backs that we've seen tonight, the fullbacks, that's Shane Davern. So you have Davern, you got McVay, Owens, and Johnson. We should also say Davern from Carlsbad, California. Johnson's from Georgia. Right. Owens from Nevada. McVay from Ohio because... Air Force has to recruit nationally because it's a special type of player that you get to come to these academies, grades, the whole, you know, the discipline, and boy, they're from all over the place. Yes, they are. Worthman on the carry. At the last second, it's McVay. Another first down, makes the first man miss. Tim McVay, oh, he fumbles the football. It's in the end zone. And Air Force is on top of it for the touchdown. Recovered by Dylan Vail. The center coming all the way down after 42 yards on the initial well, run to get the team. Yeah, I mean, the only thing Tim McVay's not going to get credit there is for a touchdown. He fumbles before he crosses the goal line. But great job by the center, Dylan Vail, to jump on that ball. And tell you what, give Arion Worthman the credit. He did a phenomenal job on the pitch. Beats the defender late pitch. McVeigh with another great run. He just can't cap it off as it, it gets punched out before he crosses the goal line. But what a job by Dylan Vale. 67, the lineman, is going to get a touchdown. Give this group credit. They fight every single play. And it's a 35 to 24 advantage now for the Falcons. Again, I can't tell you what a great job Arion Worthman did there to get that pitch. But look at Jalen Robinette. We talk about what a great receiver is, but he's one of the best blocking receivers, Mike, in the nation. And you don't get big 
40, 30, 25 yard runs without receivers blocking downfield the way Jalen Robinette does and the rest of these receivers from there. He's a great get for Troy Calhoun, a receiver that body to strength, uh, the ability to go up and catch it that you normally don't get to a triple option attack. And, you know, looking back at that play, just love the, the two handed chest pass, if you will, right. from Arion Worthman to McVay. Colorado State needs to answer. They had the lead for most of that first half. And now Air Force has exercised an 11 point advantage. Stevens goes deep for Caleb, and he's got it. That's a big way to answer to the 26 of Air Force. Just what they needed. I mean, that's how you answer. You go to your big receiver, Michael Gallup, and again, he just has the speed to run right by Latipo and a big 49 yard pickup on first down for Colorado State. This time, you know, Gallup had been stopping, doing some outcuts on Latipo. Latipo kind of sits on him a little bit. That time, Gallup, nine route, runs right by him. Good throw by Nick Stevens. And they've gone to the air. Colorado State and Gallup is a big time playmaker, and they find him yet again. And he's at the 10, brought down there by Weston Steelhammer. And that's the other thing you can do with a receiver like Ma Michael Gallup, Mike. You can put him out wide. That time they had him inside in the slot. The outside receiver clears the zone. Gallup comes underneath it. Just a nice pitch and catch from Nick Stevens to Michael Gallup. Second down and five from the Air Force 10. And this is an important drive for Colorado State. You got to answer here with a touchdown. Don't, don't settle for three here. You got to put it in. Some sort of points, though, even though a field goal would make it a one possession game. The toss out to Matthews. They try to string this out. Air Force is ready for it. We're going to shut them down for a minimal game. And I would agree with you. And the only reason why I'm saying it's important they score a touchdown, right now they haven't showed on defense they can stop this triple option attack uh, of Air Force. So nothing, they've shown me nothing that says we're going to stop uh, Air Force from scoring any more touchdowns in this game tonight. That's a good point. See what happens here on third down. They need to get to the five-yard line. Dawkins in the backfield. Gallup at the bottom of the screen. Stevens, pressure. Dawkins gives him time. The pass is caught, and it's a touchdown by Robert Ruiz. What a grab and what an answer by Colorado State. And what a throw by Nick Stevens again. Air Force comes with a blitz, man-to-man -man coverage across the board. Ruiz runs the outcut. Stevens puts a nice pass on him in stride for the 10-yard touchdown pass. And that's just a mismatch right there. Ruiz against the linebacker, Jacob Onyechi. It's just a mismatch. And good job by Nick Stevens to recognize where to go with the ball. That's a nice answer by Colorado State. Yes, it was. Second touchdown of the season for Robert Ruiz, the senior out of California, and Colorado State now trails it by only four. Nick Stevens has been outstanding since his return as the signal caller. Finds Ruiz for the touchdown. We've got a good one here tonight at Air Force. Fun game here tonight at the Air Force Academy with the Falcons on top by four. Big answer for the touchdown ready by Colorado State on a 75-yard drive. And I think they needed it because of how effective Air Force has been running the ball tonight. So we'll see if this defense, led by Marty English, defensive coordinator, can come up with something. We talked about in-game adjustments. They need to do some adjustments to slow down Tim McVay. Arian Worthman in this triple option attack of Air Force. With that UNLV win, as Worthman carries for Air Force, that gave Wyoming their first loss in the Mountain West. So Wyoming is now 5-1. Boise State is 5-1. If New Mexico comes back to win, they'll be 5-1 in that division. And speaking of running the ball, we had Wyoming earlier in the year, another program that can run the ball very effectively, more of a traditional style in uh, the Mountain West conference again very diverse in, in their offenses up here Johnson on a second down carry and the Rams say I don't think so good play Evan Colorado on the tackle with Josh loving good as well and this is what Colorado State has to do more of keep Air Force behind the chains third and five third and six those longer 
distances. They haven't been able to do that tonight. This time, good job by Evan Colorado to come up and make that tackle. And Marty English told us Colorado has to have a good game tonight. That he needs more plays like that here in the second half. What about now in third down and six? What does Air Force have in the books here? It's option. Worthman not going to get it done. Good play. Defensively, Josh Watson was there reading it perfectly and a sophomore linebacker brings him down and that's what you have to do run inside out from that middle linebacker spot that's what watson does there gets to worthman and there's nowhere to go and this is the first time tonight really that colorado state has defended this option attack correctly and watson the second leading tackler for colorado state has forced our first punt of the night here steve brosi is on for air force and Robert Ruiz, who just got the touchdown pass, takes it from the 40 and backpedals to about the 45-yard line. And that's going to take us to a timeout. We are back to Air Force. And a nice honor for Colorado State head coach Mike Bobo last night. He's from Thomasville, Georgia. He was inducted into the Thomasville, Georgia, Thomas County Sports Hall of Fame. Did his speech via video and now him and his father George are in the Hall of Fame there what a career he had at Georgia from 94 to 97 over 6,000 yards passing third in history or sixth in history I should say and he started his coaching career in 1998 right after school as a grad assistant and after 14 years at Georgia now here for his second season at Colorado State and with a win tonight they'll be bowl eligible as Gallup Gets a first down. You recognize the one of those receivers he's been throwing to in Georgia, but uh, Heinz Ward had oh, a pretty right. good career, not only in Georgia, but in the NFL. How about some of the players that come up through the ranks? Isn't that great? You know, when we talk to some coaches and they give us their history when they were assistant coaches and they tell us about the staff that they had, and you recognize now that five of those people are head coaches. Yeah. Good run by Dawkins here, and that's two first downs in a row by Colorado State. Well, he told us they wanted to target Michael Gallup this week, and uh, he didn't lie to us. No, he did not. Ten catches, a career high, and in both categories with 156 yards as well. You know, sometimes coaches tell us some things on calls and not really honest. He was pretty honest about that one. He was. Stevens going deep, and the catch is made and knocked down at the one-yard line over B.C. Johnson. And saving a touchdown that time for Air Force was Haynes Lynn. Good route by Ola B.C. Johnson, 38-yard reception, and good job by Nick Stevens to target someone other than Michael Gallup. Far side of the field, good route by Ola B.C. Johnson, one-on-one, -on -one, no safety help, big pickup. And now it's Dawkins stretching to the goal line. Touchdown, Colorado State. Dalen Dawkins with the score. Good job by Colorado State defensively to get the ball back, forcing the first punt of the ball game. And then the offense knows what to do with it. A couple of nice passes down the field. Finish it off with a Dalen Dawkins touchdown run. Two big answers by Colorado State in this second half. They were down four to start the second half, went down 35-24. They've just come back with two touchdowns back-to-back. Yeah. With just under seven minutes to play in this third quarter. Now the key is, can their defense go out there and do the same thing they did? Shut down that triple option. We got a good one tonight. Nick Stevens looking good once again, targeting his receivers as Colorado State takes the lead in this ball game. Long way to go from Colorado Springs. Tell the Ram to get pumped up. Colorado State, two touchdown drives. They have the lead. That's Cam the Ram there, Mike. You don't want to make him mad. Or you. I got rammed in the chest yeah. by your uh, left-handed <laughs> you cross. You me a Ram? I get a little excited tonight. there in college with a lot of upsets today. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you had thought Pittsburgh had a chance to beat Clemson, and you told me that on Tuesday. And I said, no, no, no. Clemson's going to go all the way undefeated. I didn't say all the way to win it all, but they're not going to lose until the playoff and you said I don't know yeah, just had a and feeling we saw punch, the score and I took a quick left hander to the chest what do they say even a blind squirrel right <laughs> now the last time they had the ball it was a three and out 
first punt of the night. So Colorado State's defense came to play, and they do it again here. This play Trey Thomas with some help. Also Sean Johnson. Well, and that's what you do. You got to walk those safeties up, and they have to come down the alley, and they have to get to Arion Workman. Now, they did a nice job there, Mike, but you look up, and it's still five yards on first down. Correct. So it's a good job by Air Force to kind of stay ahead of the chains, four or five yards on first down. Falcons still did what they needed to do. Positive yards on first down. Playbook is wide open, second down. And it's a give to Davern, and he is over the 35 for the first down. And again, you know, we see it in many offenses uh, that are predicated on the run. It is so important to get those positive yards on first down. Four or five yards opens it up, makes it much easier, and, and that's a key for Air Force. And we've seen the Falcons break them tonight. They've been able to get big gas runs, especially by 33. Well, Mike Vey. Thiessen told us his goal is five yards per carry. Eh, I think they got that and some tonight. Ronald Cleveland goes in motion. Worthman dropping back. And finally a pass, and that's Riffitt, the tight end on the reception. It's the fourth pass thrown tonight and the eighth catch of the season for the tight end. Fifth best rushing team in the nation coming in, blasting over their average tonight. McVay is taken down. That's Jamal Hicks, a true freshman defensive back. Yeah, and we talked about the in-game adjustments. Much better in this third quarter by this Colorado State defense. Neither team's able to really stop the other on third down tonight. Seven of nine, both teams on third down. And of course, this is a traditional throwing down and distance here, third and long, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Air Force come option to the wide side of the field to their left. Keep an eye on Robinette, top of the screen. If they go to the air. Nope, it's a keeper by Worthman. We're both kind of pass yeah. right there. We, we thought a, a run play, and I thought maybe a pass. Yeah. And looked like a pass ended up being a run. Quarterback draw. Good good call right there. You saw the Colorado State defense separate. Down, pardon me. And Worthman comes in and picks first up the first foul. down. Late hit, defense number 44. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, they tack it on to Sean Mays, call for the penalty. Yeah, and that's just going to be a free 15 as Worthman gave himself up with the feet first line. A great call. Quarterback draw. You're going to see Worthman slide, give himself up. And once you do that, you cannot come in. And you saw Deshaun Mays come in. It wasn't, wasn't vicious, but it was enough to draw the flag. It's an excellent call. See everybody going back there? They yep. figured, OK, we got to play pass here. And they had the whole middle of the field wide open. Worthman hanging back for the time being and unleashes it well overthrown out of bounds. McVeigh, the intended target, and was blanketed by Trey Thomas. Yeah, good coverage that time by Trey Thomas as they try to throw it backside. And I really thought Arian Worthman that time, Mike, even though it was a called pass, had some green out in front of him to the right if he kept running on that little rollout. Worthman, three of five passing tonight for Air Force. Same thing, another keeper up the middle has some space and head down to the five yard line. Good run by Worthman. When you love the change up by Worthman, they're gonna run quarterback draw again. Last time he slid, this time he lowers the shoulder and goes and some fancy footwork from Arion Worthman to escape. Again though, a called quarterback draw. I just like how he finishes the runoff as well. He replaced Nate Romine, the starter, the senior, midway through the third quarter at Fresno State. Helped him in a come from behind win in that game. Started last week at Army and here tonight. And now has engineered this drive to just outside the five with his legs and is pushed back at the three. Four hundred yards rushing by Air Force tonight. Worthman has 135 of those yeah. yards. Four hundred yards with uh, 17 minutes to go in this game. Right. Johnson and Owens in the backfield, second and goal. Yeah. 
worth being stood up. He's going to lose yardage. Colorado again. And the Rams reading the key that time. And we've called Colorado's name out a couple times here in the second half. Really didn't call him in the first half. He's coming down the line, getting off his block pursuing the Worthman and just a good job by 43 having Colorado to beat the block and stand up Worthman and send him back. It's a good point Brady. you can tell that he's really come a little bit more energized here in this second half. And that's what the halftime talks are sometimes do to you I'm sure from the coaching staff. McVay and Daver now in this possession with third and goal from just outside the five. Also in the backfield Tyler Williams. And it's Williams diving, touchdown, Air Force. Exceptional job by Tyler Williams to get it to the outside, dive for that pylon, hit it with the football. You have then broken the plane, and that's a touchdown for Air Force. They've been hurting Colorado State all night wide they do it once again the speed of Williams gets it to the outside on the toss and it's a touchdown that's his fourth of the season and Tyler Williams junior from Arizona for this Air Force group and they are back on top now after the extra point 409 yards rushing tonight. That's going to help the cause. It's tough to stop. Williams this time puts the Falcons back in front. Now, here we have a 42 to 38 lead for Air Force after the latest touchdown by Tyler Williams. Yeah, it's like check, checkmate. Now it's Colorado State's turn. Can they answer uh, to go back ahead? Clark on the return once again for Colorado State to the 25 yard the championship line. Championship game. Third down for Colorado State. Third chance to answer. Stevens, hit as he throws. Gallup, an amazing reception. He does it again. This guy is spectacular. How does he make that grab? What a catch. Michael Gallup climbs the ladder, goes up in high points, and finally, Air Force brings a safety over the top for help. Brody Hicks, 18, hits Gallup. But he still makes the catch. I mean, just an exceptional receiver is Michael Gallup. Brady, the concentration you're getting hit on your back and falling backward, he had to go all the way up to make that. Nick Stevens took a big hit on the play as well. And you, you said it, Mike, the concentration to go up high point it, control it, hit the ground as hard as he did, and complete that catch. Dawkins carry takes us to the end of the third quarter and sets up what should be a very exciting 15 minutes of football coming your way from the United States Air Force Academy. Gallup now with 182 yards receiving on the 11 catches as the Rams discuss what they need to do on this drive to go back on top. Tim McVay almost had his fourth touchdown tonight, but they got it anyway. Ruiz and Colorado State looking to go back on top when we return. There's the Ram Falcon trophy. Ooh, guarded right now by Cam the Ram. Cam the Ram. He's not going to let anyone get close to it. Goes to the winner of this annual matchup. Has been awarded since 1980. Colorado State looks for back-to-back -back wins over Air Force for the first time since 2002-2003 to keep that trophy in Fort Collins. We shall see. Troy Calhoun and Air Force. Right now on defense and nursing a four-point advantage as we begin the fourth. Mike Bobo and the Rams have a second down as they get it out to Anthony Hawkins. And Hawkins has stood up three yards shy of a first down with third on the way. The ball came out. I'm going to say he was down. Yeah, it was blown dead. And it'll be third down here for Colorado State. Same. The passing game of Colorado State almost 300 yards and 409 rushing, rushing yards for Air Force. Stevens. I want to get this play right. Matthews spinning and it's going to be about a yard shy. He's got pushed back. 
And now here's what we talked about. Will they go for it fourth and a yard? Yeah, first off, I thought they would have thrown it there on third down. They decided to go the inside handoff to Matthews, but I think they did that because Mike Bobo knew he was going to go for it on fourth down, so he had two plays uh, to play with there. Head coach Mike Bobo, who also calls the plays, the offensive coordinator, Will Correct. Friend. And they work closely together, and now they're going to go for it on fourth down. Matthews. This is going to be close. I don't know. Izzy Matthews. I don't think he has it. Colorado State needed just a yard. Air Force is fired up. The spot did not look good. He didn't get it, Mike. He did not. What a stand by Air Force. Yeah, they don't even have to measure that. They stopped him. <sighs> Weston Steelhammer was in there. We saw him shaking up, shaking up earlier in the game, and just all out, everyone attacking for Air Force, and that's what you have to do. You have to get low when you're a smaller defensive unit like they are. Get low at the point of attack, pad level. They do that, and they stop Izzy Matthews short of the first down and take over on downs. You called a big play by Weston Steelhammer. The career night for Arion Worthman continues in just a second career start. Dropping back. And it's overthrown for Robinette. He got taken down by Tyree Simmons. No call. Good timing right when the ball was there. And I love how I say right in their wheelhouse, and they drop back to throw it on, <laughs> on first down. And But, you know, give them credit because they're taking shots for their big receiver, Jalen Robinette. But that time, good coverage in the secondary by Colorado State. Good protection by Air Force, and boy, what a big hit Worthman takes. Yeah, that was Darnell Thompson that laid the stick that time. Second down and 10 for Air Force. Thank you. Thank you. Now on the edge, McVay. And he spun down across the 40, a little shy of the first, and the play continues. And they blow it dead, let's see, they mark him down to 42. And they're not gonna give him that forward progress, and I tell you what, as a running back, boy, that, that bugs you, because you're still running, you're still going, and just you want, you're just tell him, give me a second, don't blow the whistle so quick. So this is gonna be fun for you tonight with this, I mean, as a former running back, oh, yeah. and fullback, and tailback, you've done both, I'm and you've seen glory. it all tonight. The host of running backs that Air Force has, third and short, and Davern, does he have enough for the first and should? The mark is at the 44. That's where the progress was. And this drive continues. Davern, fullback. Johnson, a fullback. Jacoby Owens, Tim McVay, two running backs. But all these guys seem so interchangeable with what they can do. They do. Johnson, Davern, pretty much is exclusively fullbacks. Jacoby Owens does both. McVay's more of that speed back that they really use in the option game on the perimeter. Worthman. Robinette, was he held? And the official throws the flag. Simmons is on coverage. <laughs> and Robinette says, thank you. Yeah, and as Robinette cut back in to try to get the ball, Tyree Simmons used that left hand and held Robinette. And that's the pass interference. You'll clearly see his left arm go up. It's a good call by the official. You can't do that. And Eddie Shelton has been Passing busy tonight. Defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, so Simmons, senior, gets called for the penalty, and now the ball is inside Colorado State territory. They'll take it any way they can get it here, especially on this drive that's been broken up a lot by a lot of reviews and calls. See the little bow by Robinette yeah. thanking the, uh, the official for the call? I appreciate that. McVeigh and Davern are now in the backfield for the Falcons. It's a fake to Davern, and here's McVeigh. Good blocking for Tim McVeigh, who's had an unbelievable night for Air Force. He's well over 400 yards rushing as a team. He's over 100 yards, has three touchdowns. And you know, Mike, another thing that's underrated in this option attack is how good Arion Worthman pitches the ball. You take that for granted. But boy, his pitches are spot on to Tim McVeigh in this option game. McVeigh, well over 100. He has 163 tonight on 11 carries, career high. 
with three touchdowns as well. And now Daver. And that's a first down run. And you talked about this is what wears on a defense when you go sideline to sideline with option. You have a dangerous run, a quarterback that can run the ball as well. And then you pound it inside with a 240, 250 pound fullback. Listen, this is a drive that we might come back to at the end of this ball game if Air Force goes on to win it because they've taken up a lot of time. I know there's a lot of time left, but this is going to push it over a two possession ball game if they can get a touchdown here. There's Johnson. Or well, could make it a two possession yeah. ball game if they get a touchdown. Go back up by 11, which they've done once tonight. Yeah, and so if you're at Colorado State, it's very important here that you hold them to nothing more than a field goal. Well, because you had said it, they have really not done a great job of keeping Air Force you know, out of the end zone yeah. here tonight. There hasn't been a lot of drives. They've only stopped them one time, two times as McVay carries again. The two times have been the interception that they got for the touchdown, and then they stopped him on a three and out. Yeah. There's only been one punt tonight by Air Force. They're getting chunks. They can get another first down at the five-yard line. This is the 11th play of the drive coming tonight. 59 rushes and seven passes, the play selection for the Falcons. McVeigh to the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown. It's his fourth of the night. And they just go toss sweep to the right, Mike. McVeigh picks up the first down, but does one better as he gets it inside the pylon for his fourth touchdown of the night. You might say to yourself, well, the ball was in his right hand. It didn't seem like it crossed inside the goal line. Part of his body did. Therefore, he gets what's called the goal line extended. As long as the ball crosses the goal line, even in the out of bounds stage, part of his body came inside that end zone. He gets goal line extended. This is a touchdown. Eight minutes and 36 seconds to play in the fourth. Air Force has gone up by 11. Second time they've done that here tonight at home. And they did it the Air Force way, methodically moving the ball down the field. At this point. And he's, and he's and probably he's, a little upset with himself. Thought he could have had five, have five. touchdowns. Yeah, should have. He, he fumbled, and his center, Dylan Vale, was able to recover it in the end zone for a touchdown. 49 points tonight by Air Force as a new season high. Stevens to the air. Colorado State, a man open, and on the catch, into Air Force territory. What a grab by Ola B.C. Johnson. Just two tonight, that was Yeah, bad. and you know, Colorado State's gonna start airing it out, and again, they sit on Ola B.C. Johnson, and again, just runs right by the defensive back, Jesse Washington. Nice ball by Nick Stevens, and a big play on first down for Colorado State. Stevens again. And over the outstretched arms of Anthony Hawkins. And, you know, you just said, you know, Air Force knows they're going to air it out. Well, I think they thought they might be doing this a lot more throughout the game. Yeah. They really haven't taken that many shots. No, and I tell you what, Anthony Hawkins was by the defender as well right there again in a better throw by Nick Stevens, and they might have six. So, I mean, if you're Air Force now, you cannot let the receivers of Colorado State run by you. Give them the catch underneath you. Come up and make the sure tackle, but you can't get beat by the home run. Second down run by Dawkins. That's a good run there on second down. And we're at third and short on the way. Defensive coordinator for Air Force, Steve Russ, had said we got to be cognizant of the big balls and the long plays on defense. And now they really have to bear down with eight minutes to and go. And he said when the ball's in the air, we got to go make a play on it. And so far, really, Colorado State, the receivers have better, done a better job of going and making the plays on the ball while they're in the air. Now, the last time down here, we had said four down territory for Colorado State, and it was, but they got stopped. And now it's third and short. Same situation, Rainey. It was third and three. They had picked up two and had a fourth and one. What happens here? 
Dawkins puts that to rest. He's got the first down. Well, I mean, you would definitely go for it, Mike. And you say to yourself, well, there's seven minutes, 25 seconds and counting in the game. But against a team like Air Force, that's not much time if you give them the ball back. Your possessions are limited. Mike Bobo knew that coming into the game because when you have a ground control team like Air Force, they're taking possessions away from you offensively as the game goes on. And here's the other thing. If they score the touchdown, they have to go for two, you would think. they got to get this down to a three-point ball game. Need the touchdown first, though. Stevens has a man, and open for the catch is the tight end, Dalton Fackrell. He just turned around at the right moment to make that grab. Yeah, and Brody Hicks, the safety, never turned around to play the ball. He just saw Fackrell make the catch and then made the tackle. Fackrell comes in with just three catches on the season. He has two tonight. And that's a big one right there. It sets up first and goal for Colorado State. Stevens guns it, end zone, and that is caught for the touchdown. Gallup, what a night he has had. And the junior on the touchdown grab, and Colorado State right back in it. Yeah, who else? A little smash route. Michael Gallup runs a corner out on top. They got a receiver underneath to hold down the coverage, and a good ball by Nick Stevens as he throws a BB in there to Michael Gallup, who makes the catch, gets the foot in for the touchdown. And after the night that Gallup has had, fitting for him that he gets his first touchdown reception, and now they have to go for two. Yeah, as you uh, correctly predicted. Stevens with Dawkins to his right. Stevens, back corner, and it goes right back to Gallup, and he has it. Count it, two-point conversion, and we've got a three-point ball I mean, game. and what great field awareness for Michael Gallup as he makes the catch and gets the feet and bounds. Just an excellent job. Nick Stevens rolls out, goes to his favorite target here for the touchdown, controls it way down, and then, hey, why not go back to Michael Gallup for the two-point conversion? And this is a three-point ball game. Well, we had a 69 to 66 score earlier today in the Mountain West. Are we getting close to that, Rudy? 49, 46 here it's, tonight. It's basketball season, so these uh, these guys want to score a lot of points. Can't wait to show you what Michael Gallup has done tonight for Colorado State after the kick, and they'll take it from the 25-yard line. Air Force. And this is where the discipline comes of Air Force on running that play clock down before they snap the ball. Johnson. Picks up three yards, and now with 440, the clock running Air Force in no hurry. And you see the toughness, Mike, of Arion Worthman. He's been doing it in the running game, but when he's thrown it, he's been effective, and he's been taking big hits tonight. Takes one there, but still completed that big first down to Tyler Williams. Tons of credit to him. A sophomore, second career start. Had a little bit of a leg injury last week. Was held out of practice early this week. But has really come to play here and tonight. And remember, you said it, the starter, Nate Romine's out with an ankle injury, not even dressing tonight. Again, Johnson, not too much, but it's a 30 short coming up this time with under four minutes to go. Remember, every time you run a play, the play clock sets at 40 and it runs. Air Force is a disciplined, well-coached team by Tro Troy Calhoun. Arion Worthman is not snapping that ball until it gets to three seconds on the play clock at least. This is a big play for both ball clubs right here. If Air Force can pick up this first down, it'll force Colorado State to start using some timeouts. I was just going to say, one more first down, and they have to start doing that. Three and a half, and they can take this all the way down to under 320 if they are smart about it with a play clock. A little sooner, but here's Worthman, and not going anywhere is not going to get the first down. Kevin Davis was the first on the scene for Colorado State. Yeah, they just, uh, what's the saying? You go to the, the well one time too often. They go to that quarterback draw once again with Arian Worthman, but Colorado State was ready for it there as they come up and make the tackle, and they're going to force Air Force to punt. And just their second punt of the night as Steve Brosey is back to kick. Robert Ruiz stands inside of his own 20 for Colorado State.
Good kick. Ruiz backpedaling inside his five yard line. Dangerous. Gets a block. No flag. And he gets to the 10. Get set. Two minutes and 25 seconds left. And Colorado State. Worthman gets tackled. Rams on offense will be back. And now they go to work deep in their own end. Over BC Johnson on a catch just shy of the first down. They have all three of their timeouts left. And we've got two minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. And remember, a touchdown wins it, but a field goal ties it and puts it to overtime as we take a look at the records of those four teams that we just showed that they lost to all very good. Now the crowd reacting to the jumbotron here at the stadium. They didn't think that was a catch by Johnson, but the play stood and we've already run another. So they. First down, Stevens. Pressure, Stevens. Gets rid of it, and he gets it to Dawkins somehow. Avoids the sack, and they're going to gain at least a yard out of the play. Ryan Watson had him in his grasp for Air Force. Yeah, but you know, good job to avoid this sack, but also a good job by Air Force to make the tackle to keep that clock running to force Colorado State to burn a timeout. But you're right, good job by Nick Stevens to avoid that sack. Get it to Dawkins for something. And they have to call the timeout to preserve some clock. So a minute and 36 remain. And here's what's at stake here tonight with these two teams. Colorado State needs a win to be bowl eligible for the fourth consecutive season. Air Force looking to pull off their seventh straight win at home over Colorado State as this pass is incomplete. Ola B.C. Johnson on a second and long. And David Harris had pressure that time on Stevens. He yeah. laid the hit. Stevens gets crushed once again and delivers the ball to Ola B.C. Johnson and just doesn't make the catch. And boy, when your quarterback takes a hit like this, you really want to make the catch for him. Crowd rising to their feet at Falcon Stadium. It's a third and nine. Pressure. Stevens gets it to Gallup. He's got a first and more. Gallup. And he fumbles the football. It's recovered by Air Force. Picked up by Brody Hicks. Falcon fans going crazy with a minute and 21 seconds and left. Grant Ross, 44, the linebacker for Air Force, strips Michael Gallup of the ball. And after an unbelievable night, it's a shame it comes down to Michael Gallup fumbling. But give Grant Ross all the credit in the world. He hustled behind the play, never gave up on it, reaches in, strips it. Brody Hicks recovers it. And that should seal it for Air Force. Well, you said it, Rainey, the unbelievable night for Gallup. A shame for him and for Colorado State that it could end that way. We'll see. Let's take a look at it. It's clearly a fumble. You said it. Ross gets that right arm in there, rips it out. And that's his first forced fumble this season. Couldn't have come at a better time. Brody Hicks, who has done a little bit of everything for this team. He's got four interceptions couple breakups he's got two block kicks and now he can add a fumble recovery to his credit and Colorado State still with the timeouts here so as this carry goes to Owens they stop the clock with a minute and 15 seconds they can get they it can, back. they can yeah one more run they'll call another timeout and then they're gonna have to stop him on third down there's McVeigh we need to stop him and he gets close to the 30-yard line, and that's going to be a first down, and that's going to do it for Air Force. They couldn't get it done. A career night for McVeigh, and that's fitting the way he's won the football You're tonight. You read my mind, fitting that McVeigh gets the toss sweep to the perimeter, cuts it up, gets the first down, and that's going to seal the win for Air Force, their seventh win of the season. And pretty impressive, Mike. Almost an eight-yard per carry average on the night for the entire Air Force team and very simple if you can run the ball like they can you win a lot of games that's just too much that's too many yards to carry him and that's that's put yourself in an average of second down and two the entire night that's really been kind of the case they didn't throw the ball much they didn't have to 
And their host of running backs with Johnson, Owens, McVeigh, and Davern. They were able to wear down Colorado State and pick up the win here tonight. You know, and give Arion Worthman, the quarterback, a lot of credit. Again, it, it goes underrated, but all the pitches he gave today to McVeigh were on the money. There was none low, none high. When he decided to run it, he did a nice job. Big yardage. Great win for Air Force. Let's not forget Colorado State, too. They missed a couple of field goals tonight. They had a 42-yarder that they missed and a 51-yarder that went off the post. And they end up losing by four. Yeah, just a great showdown here in the Mountain West tonight. One of those games where really both teams deserve to win, but Air Force pulls it out. The Ram Falcon Trophy is coming back here to Colorado Springs. And the seventh consecutive victory for Air Force over Colorado State here at home. Once again, the final Air Force 49 and Colorado State 46. Now an encore presentation of today's Mississippi State Alabama game.